All right, so let's take a look at number one. What do you need to prove in order to use CPCTC? That the two triangles are congruent. What are the different ways we can prove a triangle is congruent? Remember, CPCTC comes after we prove they're congruent. So if we're doing a proof, we first need to prove that they're congruent. And what are those reasons that we can prove? Sarah. Perfect. So those are the five ways we can prove triangles are congruent. Let's take a look at number two. How do we find the value of x in this isosceles triangle? 5x plus 5 is equal to 65. So when we subtract 5 from both sides, we get 5x is equal to 60. And what do we get for x? 12. 12. Number three, what postulate or theorem proves angle A is congruent to angle B? Perfect. The isosceles triangle theorem. So the isosceles triangle theorem states that if we have an isosceles triangle, which here we have ABC is an isosceles triangle, that the angles opposite the congruent sides are also congruent. Okay. So angle A is congruent to angle B. That's just the definition of the isosceles triangle theorem. Number four, one angle of an equilateral triangle measures 9x minus 20. What is the value of x? How do we solve for x here? Um, minus Perfect. Since it's an equilateral triangle, we know that each angle is going to equal 60. So we set 9x minus 20 equal to 60. So we get 9x is equal to 80, and x is equal to 80 over 9, which I believe was 8.8 .8 repeating. Is it okay if we write it as 80 over 9? Do you, have to you can leave it as a fraction. Okay. Number five, number five, find the value of x. What equation do we have to set up to find x here? Florencia. Three x plus one plus two x plus two x is equal to one eighty. Remember. This angle here is also 2x since it's an isosceles triangle. So we know that all three angles in this triangle add up to 180. So we have 7x plus 1 is equal to 180. If we subtract 1, we get 7x is equal to 179. And x is equal to 179 over 7 which I think was 25 point something, 25.6. Again, you're not gonna have a calculator on the test, so you could just leave it as a fraction. But if it goes in evenly, I expect the simplest form, okay? Yes? What was your question? Remember, the sides that are opposite, or the angles that are opposite the congruent sides are congruent. Um, okay. 
So that's why this angle here is 2x and it's not 3x plus 1. Number 6. What is the measure of one of the base angles of an isosceles triangle if the measure of the vertex angle is 54 degrees? So if we have an isosceles triangle here, which angle would be our vertex angle? The top one. Because the vertex angle is in between the two congruent sides. So if our top angle is 54, and if the bottom angle, the base angle to the left is x, what would our third angle be? x. So can we set up an equation now? Yes. What would our equation be? So 54 plus 2x is equal to 180. So we subtract 54. We get 2x is equal to 126. And x is equal to 63. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the length of the side AB? So what type of triangle do we have here? Equilangular. equilangular. And if it's equilangular, we know that it's also equilateral. So if it's equilateral, we know that all the sides are going to be equal. So how can we find x here? Seven x minus eight is equal to three x plus thirty-two. We set them equal to each other. So we subtract three x from both sides. We can add eight to both sides. So we get four x is equal to forty, and x is equal to ten. Is that our answer? Yes. No. What's it asking for? A B. So A B doesn't have anything over here. So where do we plug the 10 in? We could plug it into either one because we know that all three sides are going to be equal. So if we plug it into 7x minus 8, we get 70 minus 8, which is equal to 62. Any questions on anything from this page? Ready to move on to the next one? So find DB. What's DB? 12. DB is equal to DC, so we just know that it's 12. Find AB. How do we find AB here? Four x plus twelve is equal to six x minus two, because we know that these two sides are going to be equal to each other. So we can subtract four x from both sides and add two. So we got fourteen is equal to two x, and x is equal to seven. We just take this and plug it in. So it's seven times four. 28 plus 12? 40. So AB is equal to 40. Ten says find the measure of angle ABD. So we're looking for this angle here. How can we find this angle? We set them equal to each other. So we have 2x plus 30 is equal to 7x minus 5. Then we solve for x. So we get 35 is equal to 5x, and x is equal to 7. 
Then we can take this and plug it back in. And what do we get for the measure of angle ABD? 44. 44 what? Degrees. Degrees. Let's look at 11. BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. What is the value of X? How can we find X here? 7X minus 4 is equal to 2X plus 6. Again, we solve for X. We get 5X is equal to 10. So x is equal to 2. Let me take that. And oh, all it's asking us for is the value of x. So we just leave it like that. x is equal to 2. Any questions on anything from this page? You can just put the number. Okay. If it helps to remember that you're like finding the measure of angle ABD, you can put it. But. Okay. So number 12, BD is the mid segment of triangle ACE. What is the length of AE? How do we set this one up? Are the two equal though? Are they the same length? No. I'm just trying to say that AE equals half of BD. So how do you see that? Well, BD is half of AE, right? Yeah. So, Nicolene, how do we set this up? We multiply by one half. Which one do we multiply by one half? So if let's say BD was 5, what do we know that AE is going to be equal to? 10. So if we multiply BD by 1 half, do we get 10? No. Which one do we have to multiply by 1 half? AE. So we're going to have to multiply this by 1 half. So we set it up as 10x minus 9 is equal to 1 half. 16x minus 2. And first we need to distribute the 1 half. So we get 8x minus 1 is equal to 10x minus 9. Now we can just solve for x like normal. We get 2x is equal to 8 and x is equal to 4. Yeah. So we take this and it's asking us for AE. So we plug it into the bottom one. And we get, what's 16 times 4? 64 minus 2, which is 62. So this 5 and 10 was just there to use in this example. So find the measure of angle BDC. So we're looking for this angle here. Sam, what'd you get? 30. We know that because BF is parallel to CE and BD is our transversal. So BDC is going to be congruent to FBD, the angle that says 30, because they're alternate interior angles. So if they're congruent, we know that BDC is also going to be 30 degrees.
to get 14. So now we're finding BDE, this angle here. So we know that BF, again, is congruent to CE, and BD is our transversal. What types of angles are this one and this one? Same side interior. So what do we know about same side interior angles? They add up to 180. So we know that 30 plus x is equal to 180. So that we can just subtract 30. We get x is equal to 150. So BDE is equal to 150 degrees. Another way to do this one is we know that FBD, so this angle that's 30, and this angle here are alternate interiors. So this is also going to be 30. And since this is a straight line, we know that this angle and the 30 are going to add up to 180 because it's a straight line. So there's more way, multiple ways to do questions like these. Number 15, find the perimeter of triangle ABC. What do we need to find the perimeter? We need to add all the sides. So we have AC and we have CB. All we need is AB. How can we find the length of AB? So DF is going to be twice as long as AB. What's the measure of DF? 20. So then what's AB? 10. So what do we get for the perimeter of ABC? 25. Perfect. Sixteen, find the measure of angle DBC. So this angle here. What can we do to find this angle? So we can say that this line, this line's parallel to this one, and this is our transversal. So this angle here is going to be 20. We can also say that this side, the mid segment here, and this side are parallel. And this is our transversal. So now we have another two alternate interior angles. So now the angle that we're looking for is also 20. So what's the measure of DBC? 20. Sarah. Again, there's multiple ways to do these. Any questions on anything from this page? Ready for the next? Seventeen. Two sides of a triangle are 15 and 20. What are all the possible values for the length of x? So we have x is going to be greater than a number and less than a number. How do we find this number to the left? 20 minus 15. And what do we get? 5. And how do we find the number to the right? We add them. So 20 plus 15. 35. So you get x is greater than 5 and less than 35.
Okay, 18. Can the following be the lengths of the sides of one triangle? We have 9, 10, and 11. Yes. Because any way we add these two, they're going to be greater than the third. So 9 plus 10 is 19, and that's greater than 11. 10 plus 11 is 21. That's greater than 9. And 9 plus 11 is 20. And that's greater than 10. So yes. If it asks you to explain, if it's yes, then you need to do all of them. But if it's no, you only need one counterexample to prove that it's no. That's if it asks you to explain. But if it just says, like, can they be, all you need is yes or no. Okay. Or if it says true or false, all you need is true or false. Can the following be lengths of the sides of one triangle? Five, four, and nine. No. Why not? Because five plus four is equal to nine, and that's not greater than nine. Can the following be the lengths of the sides of one triangle? Ten, two, and seven. No, because two plus seven is equal to nine, and that is not greater than ten. So no. Yes. If it says to explain, and it's true, like yes, you can, you need to do all three. But if it's no, all you need is one counterexample to prove that it's no. Okay? That's if it says to explain. No. My birthday's next week. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'll remind you guys. No. She did, though. Okay, we're almost done. Order the sides of triangle ABC from shortest to longest. How do we know what angle C is? What's 50 and 70? What's 50 plus 70? 120. So angle C is 60 degrees. So what is going to be our shortest side here? BC. Because it's opposite of the shortest angle. What's our second shortest side? AB. Because it's opposite of the second shortest angle. And what's our longest side? AC, because it's opposite of our longest angle. Yes. They need to add up to 180. So 50 plus 60 plus 70 is 180. So Haley, what do we do for 12? I mean, 22. Yep. Perfect. Yes. And then angle B. So it's Angle A is the smallest since it's opposite of the shortest side. So we do the same thing that we did before. And 23, compare angle A to angle X. Yeah. So angle A is opposite of 9 and angle X is opposite of 8. So which, which is our bigger angle here, A or X? So angle A is larger than angle X. Any questions on this page?